Hey everyone, Tim once again with the Word of Life Church here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Hope everyone had good services at their churches yesterday on Resurrection Day. Uh, we had good service yesterday. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to attend last night's service, but uh, we had, uh, the, or I had, <laughs> or we, we had good services uh, there at the Word of Life Church and uh, good morning service, had a good message and uh, uh, good Sunday school lesson and uh, just uh, all around good service and uh, hope everyone had uh, there again a good blessed day yesterday you could spend it with family and uh, with your <clears throat> excuse me with your brothers and sisters in Christ and also with your you know your blood uh, family as well uh, flesh and blood you know uh, blood kins but uh, I've said uh, many times before sometimes you're uh, a lot of people don't have a uh, uh, family, uh, you know, in this world, in uh, you know, blood kin, uh, or if they do, uh, some of them aren't. They're closer to their church family, their brothers and sisters in Christ, than they are their actual blood family. Uh, unfortunate, but some actually go to church with their blood family. So that's uh, to me that's. That's the best case scenario, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just uh, you know, uh, sometimes. Uh, but that's not always the case, and you know, sometimes you have family that sh that, that don't go to church. Maybe older family that uh, that that can't for various health reasons or whatever. You know, each and every situation is different. Uh, you know. If you hear noise making, it's my little dog. As usual, it's my little dog. And I, just, I just touched her to touch her. <laughs> kind of quiet down. She looked around at me like, what's wrong? What am I doing? So if you hear any noises, it's uh, as usual. My, my little dog laying beside me over here. So uh, <laughs> at any rate, there again, I hope everyone had good services at your church yesterday. Celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, as my last video message Friday, he is risen, but you know, right now he is sitting at the right hand of the Father or, you know, God, you know, Yahweh, Jehovah, you know, uh, Yahuwah, you know, that's something that actually they say is the, some of the, the Jewish, you know, that still <laughs> are practicing you know, Jews over in the Holy Land, over in Israel, uh, that's what they say is correct, the true. Because, you know, God's Word does say Yah at one point in the Old Testament. That's what they say his name is, but, you know, it goes by many different names, but he is God. He is our Father in Heaven. The Bible says, you know, to call no man Father. You know, we call our, you know, flesh, our fathers and flesh and blood, you know, that gave us, you know, life, you know, according to God's plan, we call, you know, father, you know, fathers and dads or your, you know, daddies and stuff, you know, but, uh, so it's to call no man father and that's relating to as far as calling father as in, in place of our father in heaven and, uh, it's kind of funny that particular <laughs> uh, religion, or denomination, religion really, that's uh, actually makes their parishioners call their their priests, their living fathers. You know, get into that, but uh, you know, but they really become in certain aspects really more of a political power more than they have a a religious power. Uh, but there again, we don't want to get into all that because we, you know, we don't want to follow that, <laughs> that trail. But, uh, you know, at any rate, uh, hope you, when you, this, when you listen to this video, whenever you do, hope you're blessed to the Lord, you know, and, uh, hope you're saved and, uh, walking in God's will because that's our ultimate purpose is to become saved. As I've said, most precious thing in this life that you will obtain. Because, as I said, that's that's the main goal of each and every one of us. 
because that's you know one of two ways you're going to go out of this life you know the salvation or not you choose the Lord Jesus or do you don't <laughs> you know people say I don't know why God would send somebody that's that does so much good to help well he does you send yourself to hell by not choosing the Lord Jesus well he he did good and he he, he went down and he helps people and everything well you know that's I know a lot of people that do good I have done good but you have to you must be born again so why don't you allow the Lord to draw you to the altar of repentance Accept that you must be born again. Accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Not just by lip service, but actually become born again. And let those works, continue those works, and that way they will count for something. Because a lot of people are going to say, you know, the Bible talks about it, you know, say, did we not? You know, and these people are just in name only. A lot of people get scared at that verse. It talks about people saying, well, did not we do these things in, in your name? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not you know, heal? Did we not do this? You, know. you better make sure. You know, we, I'm just talking, I'm just saying you, you, you. I'm not I'm talking about, I'm talking to myself as well. I'm not above. and you, you, We are all in the same little boat to you we better make sure absolutely 100% sure that we are saved and on our way to heaven because one shot there ain't no getting up there saying oh you missed it I'm gonna put you back down you're gonna be born again you're gonna live another life just so you can be sure no Bible does not teach that at all but you might could twist something around to maybe fit that to make somebody ease their conscience make them feel good and to deceive them and there are some religions that teach that to deceive people but think of several but that's it's not the way it is deception so high and talking about that I want to hit a little bit on that today. We're going to be in 2 Thessalonians, and I'm going to bounce around. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading and bounce around a little bit and talking about it. So you, you can bounce around with me. Just hang, hang in there with me. <laughs> but, you know, the as I talked about, and I said I wanted to really kind of jump on the train about, and I've just felt led and impressed upon here of lately, really to start on here and really to start behind the pulpit and then if I teach Sunday school or, or not or, or, or just to tell people, talk to people or preach behind the pulpit, teach on here, whatever, wherever, when and wherever, get the chance. To start, to start telling, to start preaching, start pushing, the end is stepping up, has been for a while. And the church is just being nodded off to sleep church you know it's it's oh it's okay you're doing just fine you know no we need to recognize the enemy is look it's like this I'm trying to explain it like this been thinking about this thinking about this a few minutes ago I was in there making me some more coffee a few minutes ago yes I got my had my third cup of coffee so yeah yeah I'm doing good here <laughs> so uh it's like this this especially since newfound knowledge now granted through God's word we have knowledge wisdom spiritual knowledge understanding of God's word but also knowledge has increased in other areas we've had other historical texts early knowledge that the church fathers had and Jewish the Jewish teachers had through other texts other stuff 
And the Bible talks about knowledge being increased. And that's just more than just this technology that I'm using right here and knowledge about, you know, automobiles, you know, things. And I think there is more knowledge that we've lost that was going on and things going on before the flood than, than we've been told, okay, and that we that we understand. Too much to really go into today, and a lot of people, when you start talking about that, think you're kind of, you know, out there because a lot of people have not studied that. But that's part of it, though. The enemy sees people getting this knowledge more and more and more. And it's been assigned to him. Now, this is in God's word as well. It said knowledge is being increased. But also, talking about the fall, it's coinciding with the falling away of people out of the church in numbers as well as the teaching of God's word. As I said about how much, how many, and I, and I think I did it, the one in one of the videos a while back, I I, I did a, a count, and I think I counted ten or twelve or something different Bible translations or versions. People, we need to decide which translation is closest and the correct one, and all of us need to stick with it. I'm gonna take a stand and start. We need to start doing that. Nobody's going to, there, there, there may be a few out there that will stand with me and say, yes, we need to do that. But I go into different churches and people are different reading different versions. I listen to videos on here of people teaching and preaching and each one may use a different version. They do. I look at these, like these, uh, I'm using right now this online Bible. You go to the Bible, the, the these Christian stores, and how many versions is on the shelf? I'm getting annoyed at this. Is anybody else? We need to decide. Do we need to go back, like a few people have, and go back and go back to the original text and do a rereading of it and a, re a translation of it without some of what was put in by the early people that translated it and make that the version that we use now i'm just saying just don't fall out with me about this i'm just saying but look how many versions are out there right now And stuff has changed around and added and take and ta have been taken out and and you know, does this not bother anybody? I'm just I'm, I'm just asking. Let me give you an example. The whole thing about Easter. I think I've got myself pretty much winged from using the word Easter when I'm talking about the Passover and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm saying it now, but I'm using it as an example. But I'm to the point that I refuse to use that word. Now, as I've said, I've said it on here, the, the KJV uses it and the translation, they use it. But the early church, they now said during the week of Easter but that was used that was that was that was a pagan celebrate that was a pagan goddess and that was during that was celebrated long before it, it, now if you want to go to the root of that word you're going to find that it's going to lead you to in the Old Testament there was a goddess called Inanna but that's the root it was the word Ashtoreth now go forward you're going to find Ishtar Ashtar, Astar, and then they translated the word over to Easter. Paganism, 
is invaded the church and the modern pagans are laughing at the church because of this. And one of the major things I hear people that are challenging people when they witness to them saying when you put hold up a Bible and they say you know you've got to believe in God's Word one of the things they say is they're saying well which version of God's Word are you using because there's like there's like uh, 30 40 50 of them which one are you using how do you know that's the correct one people I'm getting real here and I guarantee somebody out there that's gonna listen to this has had the same thing happen to them Now, if you say, well, I use the King James Version, and, that, and that's the correct one, somebody's going to say, well, how do you know? i say, well, that's the one that they translated, and that, you know, how are you going to convince them? How are you going to convince them? Because some of them have studied that out, and they're going to say, well, wasn't there a couple of translations before that? Wasn't there a translation, uh, a King James Version before that, that had other uh, other uh, books in it before that? Wasn't there a Bible called the Geneva Bible before that and everything? People, I'm telling you, where the rubber meets the road. I'm just saying, what are you going to do? Any is going to counter you as as much as he can he's going to sharpen his mental and spiritual skills to try to overcome you as much as he can to try to best you when you're trying to open up salvation unto him unto that person now he's going to I'm talking about the spirit that's in that person so we need we need to step up our authority our way of doing things we need to I'm talking about me too all of us we need to get out of our lethargy our laziness <laughs> start start finding out start digging into the Word of God and finding out Hey, I'm talking about not I'm, I'm I'm serious we need some we need some t t to decide the enemy is moving up his game it's all part of prophecy because he is seeing that there is a lot of us that are moving up recognizing what he is doing and he is recognizing that we are ready for a higher form of warfare against him whoa brother Tim how are you getting that uh, that cup because that's in God's Word he is recognizing that we are getting prepared or 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 a lot of us are prepared and getting other people prepared by telling people a lot of this stuff knowledge will increase that's not just of technology and stuff and going to and fro but it's of God's Word and other things that the early church fathers knew and that we are relearning so he is recognizing we are ready and getting other people ready for a higher form of spiritual warfare so guess what he is stepping up his as well against us
deception on a level that even why do you think they said even that some of God's people would be deceived if you weren't rooted and grounded and the antichrist now there again I'm not going to talk I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the catching the, um, the or, you know catching away of the, I'm not talking about the timing of the catching way of the church or whatever you want to call it, the harpazo the rapture however you want to say it. I'm not talking about the timing of that okay you know, you know, po, you know, pre, mid, post. What I'm not talking about the timing of that. I'm just saying right here and right now. You know, four two of two, 2018. Good grief! Here we go. <laughs> Before we know, it, we're going to be half a year into 2018. So. Let's get into God's word. I want to try to get some get some reading done today. Second Thessalonians. Uh, let's let's get started reading. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Let's start at verse three today. It says, "We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly." We need that today, right here, right now. For such a time as this, see, that's another thing. You and I were, are here, right here, right now, for such a time as this. In the Bible, that's what God's word. Because why? Because God has chosen us. Now, when our who is going to use a use a baseball analogy? I'm not really a baseball fan, but using who's going to step up to the plate? Or who's going to say, let's, let's go back right back to the Bible and get rid of that sports night. Who's going to say, here am I, Lord, send me. Raise your hand. I'm going to raise mine. And I trust everyone out there that will listen to going to raise their hand as well. He said, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, that, and that you, the charity, your love, of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. See, that's another thing. I said the love of many is going to wax cold. I see that a lot. Everybody's love is just going. Everybody gets their own little clicks, and everybody else is just kind of, oh, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. See you. And then they get with their own little clicks, and it's widespread. Predominantly in the larger churches that I've seen, now I've seen that. No, but it, it happens in smaller churches. Yeah, absolutely it does. But you see it a lot in the larger churches. I know because I've seen it personally. Moving on, verse 4, so that we ourselves glory in you. And let me say the other thing shouldn't happen. Can't stand clicks. I hate, I, I'd love to bust each and every one of them wide open. But let's not go there. <laughs> Because that will send me down a big trail. So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience, patience and faith, and in all your persecutions and tribula tribulations, if I can talk today, that ye endure. Are you en enduring right now? See, that's what I'm saying. He was even talking about, back then, Paul was talking about to the church of Thessalonica, back then, about having patience during the things, the tribulations that the church was having to endure. Same way today, and growing. So, brother, not really seeing much of it here in the church here in America because it's sly. What have we been talking about? What have I been talking about? I've said it from time to time to time to time in my videos. It's 
subtle. No, we're not seeing our heads being chopped off here. Not here in the American church, in the American Christianity. But you know what? We are seeing my twofold falling away that I talk about. Not mine, but what the Bible says. People leaving the churches, going and doing other things, or not doing nothing except sitting home, or going to the mountains on, on church day, on Sunday. Or leaving the church that preaches sin and your need for salvation and living that holy, set-apart, consecrated life. Going to a church that preaches rotten doctrine. That's part of that falling away from the true word of God. It's a twofold falling away. Live how you want. It's just your flesh that's sinning. Your soul is not sinning. God doesn't see your sin in the flesh. My goodness, the doctrine that's being, doc, doctrines, plural, that's being preached today. My goodness. So see how subtle it is. So people will say, well, I don't see anything that's going on. You, you can't point anything out, you know. We're not seeing, you know, people being rounded up or anything. We're, But we're seeing the falling away. But see, but even with that, we're seeing churches. We're seeing these big churches grow and people come into churches. Yeah, absolutely you are. But you're seeing a falling away of the true word of God being preached. So you don't have to see the churches being shut down right now. You're seeing the lone little churches on the side of the road with a small congregation that's still preaching the true word, consecrated, set apart, true word of God. You need salvation. You need to quit living in sin. You're seeing those shrinking. But you're seeing the large churches oh, growing and Oh yeah, you come to my church, you'd love it. You don't have to quit. Any, you can come in there, join up, and you know my preacher, he just he just teaches so good, and he'll pat you on the back and shake your hand if you can get to him. Normally he disappears right after you know the message, but you know people jump and shout and sing. No repentance from sin being preached. Just a happy-go-lucky message. Just be good, be nice to people. And you're on your way to heaven. It's to be preached to. Verse 5. Which is the manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. See, there's a lot of people, they don't teach that. You don't teach you that you might that you might suffer for the word of God. That you might have to go through tribulations and a little bit of pain and a little bit of you know somebody talking about you or lying on you or you know you might be the only one in the workplace that may be a Christian actually in name and, and in, in word and in deed might be in a lot of places that people say that, that you know you might be one and with several others that say they're Christians. Oh, absolutely. But then, at the end of the day, there was the rest of them that says, oh yeah, we're Christians, How, and even playing Christian music and everything. But at the end of the day, they say, hey, so-and-so, won't you come with us out? Let's go, let's go, you know, enjoy us an uh, afternoon margarita. Or after, uh, have a beer with us at the end of the day. Mm-hmm, yeah, boy. Say, no, thank you, I don't, drink you know i don't believe in that i think god's word tells us that we should stay away from you know alcoholic beverage oh you're one of those holy rollers aren't you well i believe according to the word of god well this never mind we'll, we'll just go and then right then you're ostracized and in some cases you kind of get pushed out and almost run off from that job or from everything but yet they're christians then you see they're who they truly are and what they're truly made of. 
before long they start opening their mouths even more and you see what more that they're made of mm. seen that happen a lot people don't want to suffer for the gospel's sake you gotta be willing you gotta be willing to lose your life down here while we're on this earth if you lose it you're going to find it when you leave here try your best to have a good time and save your life down here then yeah you're going to have a good time you're going to save it and everything you're going to fight you then you're, going to, you're not going to gain anything you're not going to gain salvation you're not going to see anything else you're going to take part when God puts you on the left side with the goats and the lake of fire is going to be your eternal home in the end. See, that's not preached anymore. Oh, hell's a doctrine. No, that's an old-timey doctrine. We don't teach or preach that anymore. You know, that's just a, you know, that's just a mid, you know, mistranslation or not, you know, I to, that's, you know, God wouldn't, wouldn't, God loves everybody. He's not going to send you to hell. He's not going to send you to, or to a lake of fire eventually. You know, he's not, it's, you that. <laughs> According to God's word, it's there. Enlarging its borders, David. People filling it up with that narrow way. That's the way I want to be on, right? Yeah. Curse down here. Short amount of time. What did I say in the last one of the last two videos? We are in our infancy as eternal beings. So what? Lose your life down here. Sure, it's going to be unpleasant for the 70, 80, maybe 90 years. Compared to what? Eternity? Eternity. Of joy, peace, and love, and comfort. No more tears, no more sorrow. Right here. Verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God. To recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Will God do that? Well, it says it right here. At some point, the Lord's going to deliver you from that. And who knows what He's going to do <laughs> to the people that cause you sorrow and tribulation and problems. Did we want God? Did we say, oh, Lord, had enough you know like the sons of thunder talks about in the God's word you'll strike them down well you know sometimes in this flesh we think that and say Lord I've had enough these people are just they're, they're, they're causing me so many problems I just I'm tired of them sick of it just yeah in this flesh sometimes we get like that wouldn't we rather those sin especially those that are just a Christian name. We want to see him turn around and come to an altar, friends, and gain that the true salvation, the true knowledge. All you can do is be an example and tell them. But look, what you're doing is wrong. You're saying this and then doing this this way. God's word tells me this is wrong. You're doing it backward. You're doing it the wrong way. You stand up straight. You stand up strong. You stand up for God's word. God can move you out of that. But there too, you stand up for God's word. He can do that. He can send. <laughs> he can avenge you. God is the the true one that avenge, that will avenge. For it. See, it's not not our place to do that. You know, sometimes we want to. It's not our place to do anything like that. God. We'll do that but we're to show charity and pray for these people because it's not our desire nor and or it should it shouldn't be our desire to see anybody go to hell during this time and then eventually after that time the period of this that resurrection to that lake of fire that burns forever as we hear people say a lot of times, it seems to be a catchphrase, you know, a lot of times we don't, we don't want to see our worst enemy 
go to that lake of fire and punishment. And you know, we don't, rightly so. We don't want to. We don't want to see anybody go to that. But take comfort. Listen to this. Could read the next one first and go back to this one, but I'll read it. I'll read it as an order. It's in verse seven. It says, "And to you who are troubled, we seem like we are. We're troubled sometimes on all sides." But it says, "And to you who are troubled, rest with us." It says, "When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels." <laughs> it says. We'll talk about a time that's going to be. It says, in flaming fire. Flaming fire. Wow. That's going to be, it's going to be bright, you know. I wonder if that can be a form of plasma energy, how that's going to be. It's interesting to think about it. It says, taking, anyway, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, right there. Right there, that's where these people that we're talking about. But if you say, you know what? Who in here claims to be a Christian? Raise your hand, but that uh, that don't obey the commandments. God said, love me. Keep my commandments. But yet in their in their words and in their deeds they show that they're far from you. Say, well why do you do what this my preacher says it's okay to do if as long as I do this or as long as I do or this is the way my preacher teaches. Well say well the Bible says this, do you not know this? Well no. I've never read that before. interesting to see how many people do that people actually and we all need help in this area but be be actually to see now some I mean I know a lot of people I know people that I may study and they study and interested who actually during the week I know people work and have stuff they got to do and everything it actually cracks open the Bible and reads it and study it now I, I read on, on here online Bible and some people that do videos or study or something like that does stuff and puts it on Facebook or puts it on video or whatever but actually genuinely just gets it down that doesn't do anything like that and will open it at some time at night and will do a genuine Bible study you know a lot of preachers won't say when you go to God's house bring the word of God Bring your Bible. There again. I think we need to. And you, you see, there's so much there again. I, I won't get into there. There again, so many versions right now. You never get it worked out and straightened out at this point. But that's a different story right now. Maybe that might be a good study and a good thought-provoking video to talk about. But. Flaming fire. He's going, he's man. He's right now. He is a consuming Lord. A God is a consuming fire. But you know what? <laughs> to be able to, we're going to need. We we are going to need those glorified bodies to be able. And we know, we changed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye. Word for that, in that is, is atomic. I mean, in the moment, the flash. Everyone's seen the video, remember, uh, when the atomic blast, like a nuclear weapon, an atomic bomb goes off and hits, and you see that, that quick flash and everything. That's what's talking about the moment, twinkling of an eye, atomic. Wow, 
think about that. Glorified body is likened unto the Son of Man. Eternal. Original plan is going to be picked back up. Except I think it's, it's going to be grander in scale now. But, you know, our bodies, you know, right now, groaning. You know, we have sickness, we have disease. You know, stuff, you know, where our body, uh, uh, frail bodies, even, we got, you know, work out, you know, work them muscles out, you know, physical exercise, profit, you know, do all that stuff. That doesn't, doesn't matter. Each day draws us closer to our physical death here, age process. Continues on. But as I said, we've got a glorified body waiting on us. We changed in the moment. That's when we have an eye. These people obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn away. And more and more the generations that come after this one generation right now that children of this generation that's brought up children that I would that my generation have are clinging to everything else but the gospel claiming that there is no God atheism some you know scientism Gnosticism everything else but verse 9 says who shall be punished with everlasting destruction everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power see that's the thing that's what I've talked about you'll be separated from the Lord forever you know a lot of people use the example of Abraham's bosom you know the great gulf it's fixed and they use the thing that they can see over in the lake of fire. Are they going to be able to see heaven and see all that and see the Lord and everything? I don't. They're a total separation, a total from anything that's ever good. Any knowledge, any, any well, know about knowledge, but they have, they'll have, they're going to have their senses, and memory, and everything. But it's going to be punished with everlasting destruction. <laughs> everlasting death. Oh, my, my goodness. If anybody just could under, understand that and grasp that and could really fully understand that, I think it's the love of God and how it could bring a person to the altar of repentance. Something like this, yeah, maybe could scare a person for a little while, but I think it's the goodness of God that leads that person to repentance. You know, some people say, oh, you know, if the veil could be pulled back and they could see into hell and everything, yeah, it might scare somebody for a little while. But, you know, sometimes, especially if you're involved in certain things sometimes fear in your mind and the enemy can make that fear go away after a certain amount of time because people well people get hooked on stuff and they try to quit and then after a while you know they get just right back into it again this is an example of what our bodies are like and what our minds are like well, it's really, it's okay. I can get back into it. Now, I, I'll just deal with the consequences later. Oh, but it's the goodness of God that will lead us to that repentance and keep us. If we stay in. We stay in it. Don't jump out. No more saying, don't jump out. He's got us in his hand. Just don't jump out. Because it said, they'll be punished. Everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his power. Let's see, I'm going down. I think I was wanting to get to the next chapter. Oh. Let's see. And as 
actually kind of put together with what I was saying earlier. Let me see. Well, let's go ahead and read this. What we're talking about, or what I was talking about in the intro <laughs> earlier, and was in the second chapter. Let's go to verse two. That you sh well, no, I'll tell you what. Let's read that quick. Verse one. We'll start verse one. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse one. Still got fifteen minutes. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind. Or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Okay? Now, I've explained this before, and it's explained that, that people, you know, these, you know, Judaizers had come in and were trying to cause a bunch of trouble at Thess Thessalonica, saying that, that the the calling away of the church, and they that they had missed the rapture, so to speak, of the calling away of the church at the time. And, you know, come in trying to cause trouble and, and convert and, you know, proselytize if you want to. As generally held by scholars and biblical. But he says, the Paul comes in and he says, listen, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. What have we talked about, talked about, and talked about? And he stepped up his game. We have that twofold falling away. And that man of sin, it says, falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Falling away is happening. I don't see it. If you look into it, you guys out there that study the Word of God, that look with your spiritual eyes and your natural, you see it first, let it process, and you look at it and you go over it and analyze it and scan it with your spiritual eye, you see it. You see that the falling away is happening in numbers and of the preaching and teaching of the true word of God. You see it. You see that twofold falling away. But, says the man of sin will have to be revealed first. The Antichrist. Antichristu. He has to be revealed first. The son of perdition. He has to come on the scene first for that, that to happen. For that end time for the Christ. For us to, you know, for all that to come. There again. Another time locked event. He comes. That's going to open up all their other stuff that the Word of God talks about. Talked about in the book of the Revelation. How about that? Another time-locked event. So Paul, that long ago, Paul's warned us of something way down the road. And we're still waiting on it. Oh, I'm not waiting on the man of sin. I know he's coming. But also, I know my Lord's coming. But right here is another time-locked event. We're waiting for it when we see it. But it's going to, and all this other stuff is going to happen because of that. But many people are going to be fooled. And when it talks about Antichrist, it said everybody's thinking, oh, he's going to be warring against Christ and fighting against Christ. And yeah, he is. But that word also means in place of Christ. He's going to fool and deceive a lot of people into making, believe, into making them believe that he is God. Because what is he going to do? Walk into the temple and declare that he is God. Right? Part of that deception. He's stepping it up. That's what he said. That's why these people, the preachers here in the end, the teachers of prophecy here in the end, and things are, like I said, he's seen, I saw part of prophecy, he's seen that we are ready and that's why he's stepping it up trying to stay ahead of us he's seeing that we that God's people the ones that are looking and praying watching and praying 
and seeing things that knowledge has increased that we're ready for a higher form of spiritual warfare. Ready your spiritual armor. Wet, as in sharpen, your, <laughs> your sword of the spirit and get ready. Be, be also ready. Be ready right now. It says in verse 4, talking about the Antichrist, the son of prison, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. So, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. See, that's why I reject and I could be wrong about this, but just bear with me. Y'all may have other ideas as well, but that's why I oppose the whole idea about the Islam, Islamic Antichrist or any other uh, God as far as any religion that we have now. You and I, we're not going to accept an Islamic Antichrist. Right? Right? I'm not, because I know that Allah is not the Antichrist, and I gotta be careful. I should, I gotta be careful what I say because of YouTube. I know that their God is not the true God. I know that their prophet is not the true prophet. Gotta be careful what you say on here. Get banned. So I'm arrogant there again, I believe. And it's a very generalized term because you can pull any God out of thin air, basically. Well, we know that the gods, and there, there's a lot more that, that, you, that we're getting out of God's word that, that it's showing. <laughs> that, you know, it's, 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 wow, it's awesome. But we know that a lot of these gods that people were the gods of Egypt that they're talking about and the, you know the Romans and the Greeks and all down through history and everything like that 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 were put into place were of course fallen rebellious angels and demonic spirits and all that and everything like that you got to be really a search of the word of God and you it, 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 it's amazing but as I've said I think I've stated this before in a few videos that I believe the end times it's going to be a mate a mating together of scientism and Gnosticism and that's where you know this man of sin is going to come in because he said he's going to exalt himself above all that is called God above all the religions of the world he's going to come in above all that and bring all those religions under under that umbrella Get what I'm saying? I said, oh, all of this call out or all of this worship. So he's going to be a God above all of that. He said, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. But, he says, and now you know what withholdeth that ye might be revealed in this time for the mystery of iniquity in verse 7 for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way now there's other people I believe that's talking about the church that's talking about the Holy Ghost there's even people that talk about that they think that's talking about since the talks about the nations and each one has a talks about a the each nation has a son of God over them talking about angelic presence that it's talking about uh, Michael the archangel I'll leave that to the listener for them to do the research on that give you some homework so Paul's saying right here. Remember when I was with you, I told you these things. So don't be, don't you know, don't be shaken about these things. Don't let these people come in and do this. Don't let anybody. Don't 
You know, be firm in the Word of God. To study to show yourself approved. Know what the Word of God says. You know, that's what I said. When you go into the church, have the Bible. Now, here again, we use and I use the the KJV, the King James, which they say is the authorized version, and they use it from the Textus Receptus. Now, there is one that's called the Stephanus Textus Receptus. Okay, that's been translated, but not going. I'm not going there right now. So, you, when I use this, you get your Bible with you and you read with me. Okay? So you'll know what I'm saying. Now, a good preacher, a good pastor will say, you bring your Bible to church and read along with me. Now, that's as far as I'm going with that because, like I said, if I start talking about other versions... I've not got, we got five, five minutes here and I'm not going into that. But <laughs> I'll say personally, and uh, I know our pastor, Brother uh, Junior Mount, that's the pastor of our Word of Life, he'll say the same thing. When you come to the house of God, bring the Word of God. You read along with me. It's the mark of a good pastor, mark of a good preacher. You know, you bring the Word of God and you read along with me. Not, you know, not that we would try to fool you, not that any, you know, try to, I'm not just saying me, I'm not just saying, I'm saying any pastor, not that we, anyone would try to fool you, but just saying, you bring the word of God. I think that's right. So, right now is the time. Right now, it is 4-2 of 2018. It's now the time to dig into the Word of God more than you ever have before. And pray and seek God more than you ever have before. If the enemy has stepped up because we're gaining more wisdom and spiritual knowledge and understanding of the Word of God and he has stepped up his warfare on us because we have grown and our warfare has gotten more powerful against him. As I said, he has released a higher form of warfare against us than we're going to have to as well. The deception gets greater. We need to step it up. Amen? Absolutely. Let me exhort you today to do that. Get into the Word of God. I know we got stuff, you got lives and everything, but make time. Make time for God. Make time for the Word of God. Make, you know, read and study. Get in your, you know, if you've got a prayer closet, you got a, <laughs> a place that you kneel down for it, whatever it is. If you're riding along, if you're outside, whatever it is, talk to the Lord. Pray. Ask for that wisdom knowledge and understanding of his word so much more in there than we can ever gain but guess what if you ask it you desire it he'll give it to you he said he would he said he wouldn't he, he, you know, he said he wouldn't leave you comfortless so if he's given you the comforter then he is going to continue to make you grow to where you can fight the enemy and come against him. David didn't go out and just sling the stone, which, you know, the Lord guided and hit Goliath in the head and came down, and he just didn't stand there saying, okay, I, didn't, I don't know what to do next. How did he know to go out and that he had to sever the head of Goliath off to kill him which by the way you had to do because Goliath was part of the tribes of the giants the Rephaim the giants of those days and two you had to sever the head off of them to kill them he knew that because the Lord told him that 
He knew that. So, therefore, we can get God's Word. Know God's Word as well. Through the Spirit, He can continue to increase our wisdom and knowledge. Amen. God's Word for the day. If you're not saved, allow the Lord to draw you to the altar of repentance and repent from your sins. Turn to the Lord. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and know, like I said yesterday, celebrated the resurrection Lord Jesus Christ know that he died on that cross for you and that three days later he arose from that from the death from death from death <laughs> he walked out of that tomb while he while his body was there he was in hell taking the keys the authority from the devil from death but repent from your sin. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. Turn away from them and know that he died on the cross. And believe it by faith. It's by faith you have to. That faith, that's that bedrock. The first thing you got to do by faith. Ask the Lord to save you. Repent from your sins and know that he died for you. He arose from the dead. Now he's sending back to the Father where he sits on the right hand of the Father making intercession and prayer for you. And I now you're to walk that set apart holy consecrated life and you will continue to grow in him as long as you study the word of God pray get with a congregation of believers but the Lord lead and guide you to where he wants you in the body he places you in the body where he wants you amen so I think be in the Lord's will continue along with this message I think it is important right now uh, do I know why well just as <laughs> mentioned in this message today about the enemy stepping up his I hate to, I hate to say it that way because it's not a game far from it being a game the enemy is stepping up and stepping forward with his his warfare say that put that way so we need to increase ours and increase our strength and our wisdom knowledge and understanding of God's word and the authority that we have so put it that way so let's continue on with that as far as the Lord will lead us in it amen so I hope you're saved and walking in God's will Amen. So, all right. God bless each and every one of you, and blessings in Christ on each and every one of you. You spiritual warriors, meet me on the battlefield. Let's march against the enemy together, and uh, study God's word. Pray on it. Let Him equip you, arm you, and strengthen you. Word of God. Amen. All right. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye now.